Hello, my Zentangle friends. This is Barbara Langston, Certified Zentangle Teacher. And I'm very happy to have you with me today. I hope you're doing well. In the United States, this is Thanksgiving week. And so I just want to start out by saying that I am grateful. I'm grateful to have you with me. Grateful to have my Zentangle supplies, to have teachers who help me learn new things. I took three Zentangle classes yesterday <laughs> and um, just very grateful for, even though this is a, a hard year for everyone, 2020 is pretty tough. I'm still grateful for what I have, grateful to be alive and grateful that I have this opportunity to bring this class to you today. So I'm gonna show you first the supplies that I have. Um, what I'm gonna show you is how to do this card. This is on a four by six inch piece of just plain black cardstock. And then I'm going to show you how to do a smaller version of this, which can hold your card. And you can make this uh, little holder into any size you want. I have found that this thin cardstock is not the best thing for it, especially for something this size that's kind of flimsy. So I'm going to show you how this would work on a smaller is entangled tile. Okay, so what you're gonna need is four by six piece of black or white cardstock. And you can do this smaller, just adjust it to whatever size piece of paper that you have. A pencil and eraser. Yes, I use erasers. A ruler. And then I think we're ready to get started. And the pattern that I used on this is a Zentangle pattern called Opus. And I was looking around Pinterest for some ideas for Christmas type trees that I could do with Zentangle and happened to come across one that had little swirls on it. Okay, so here is the step out for Opus and see how it's got lots of swirls and things like that. And I thought, hmm, I think that will work. So the basics for Opus are just, okay, let me zoom in here. And this is just a scrap piece of paper is you just, create these swirls with like a little fescue on the end. And then you just keep creating these little swirls, different sizes that can go in different ways. And then you come off the other side and do the same thing. And by the way, I do have a little bit of music going in the background. I hope it's not overwhelming. This is my first time to try it because I have my dog snoring in my room and uh, my craft room is just off of the kitchen and the dishwasher is going. So I'm hoping that you're not hearing those noises and maybe you'll hear just some peaceful guitar music. Okay, so Opus starts with those swirls. And then the next thing that you do is to just do an aura around the outside of this. And I'm gonna turn this so that it's easier for me. Bring it back to the center. 
I hope wherever you are that you are having a good week. Okay, and then the next step for Opus is to do that same thing, but to put the aura on the inside. And actually, that's how the R should be. I don't do opus very often. Okay, so we're coming on the inside. There's the R. Come back around. I'm going to come back down. Same thing here. So you're adding an inner aura. Okay, so these two bottom ones are a little bit different, but then the, the next thing that you do is you fill in these inner auras with orbs, or you could call it tipple. And just continue like that. Okay, so that basically, like I said, that is opus. And opus is a Zentangle pattern. All right, so now I'm going to show you how I did it on the four by six piece of paper. And I think I need to. Zoom out just a tiny bit. Okay. So what we want to do first is find the center. So I'm going to use a ruler because I want, if I were to send this out as a Christmas card, I would just want to make it look as nice as I can. So I don't know if you can see it, but there is a mark there. There you go. Okay. And I'm going to do the same thing down here at the bottom. I'm going to find halfway and put a mark. And again, with your pencil, you can see it in the right light. There you go. And now I want to connect those two lines. And I'm not going to use my ruler for that. I just wanted to make sure I found center. And now I'm going to put a pencil mark. OK, and I think you can see that. I'm making it darker than I normally would so that you can see it on this card, OK? And now I want to go down to the bottom. And wherever you think you want the bottom of your tree to be, and I think I want mine to be about right here. I'm going to come in, and I'm going to use my thumb, I think, and use a little mark. You can use your uh, ruler again if you want. I just want to general have those in the same place. So I have a mark right here and have a mark right here. Make these a little bit bigger for you so you can see. OK, so there was an interruption there with a Amazon delivery. And I believe what I was about to show you was I have a mark here, here, I have that center line, and then Decide where you want the top. If you want to have 
like a little star on the top, you might want to start a little bit further down. So I'm going to mark mine about right there. And then I want to just make a line across here where I want the bottom to be. And then I'm going to connect that point to this point. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Let me hold this up so you can see. Okay. So this point down to this point. And when we're finished, these lines won't show up, but I do have my trusty eraser in case we need to use that toward the end. Okay, so for this opus pattern, I prefer to start at this point and then go in that direction. It's just easier for me because we're going to build it from small to large, okay? And what I have on this one is this green metallic jelly roll pen, and that's what I'm going to use. Okay, so now I'm going to zoom back in a little bit and try to keep this to where you can see what I'm doing, okay? So I am going to start with just a small loop on each side. And I have done this so many times since I decided to do this, I could probably do it in my sleep. And then I'm going to come over here. And I'm not doing the little fescue at the end. I'm just making a little circle similar to Printemps. Okay, then I'm just going to keep going down a little bit at a time, making that spiral. And I'm using that outside grid to help me see where I want it. And I'm not staying exactly inside the line. I'm just using it like a string to help me know about where I want it to be, okay? And then I'm just going to keep getting bigger according to where my outside of my tree is, okay? Going from one side to the next, spiraling in. And generally when I have a cool thing to show you guys, it's because I've seen somebody else do it. I have not seen anybody else do this, so I'm pretty excited about it. I'm not saying nobody has, but I haven't seen it. And I don't necessarily do these perfect. <laughs> they don't exactly match, but it's not going to show in the end because there's going to be so much on here. Okay, just keep going back and forth with your spirals. I tend to do better in one direction than the other. Keep coming down, getting a little bit bigger.
Okay. And you can see now that I'm almost to the end here. So I'm going to make one fairly good size one here that ended up in that corner. And then I'm going to turn it a little bit and try to get this one a little bit the same as the other. OK. So there we did it. And since you'll be watching this on the recording, you can stop this where you need to, back it up, whatever works for you. OK, so now we have the basic pattern in there. And the next thing that I want to do is to put an aura on the outside of this whole thing. And I'm going to go ahead and put a circle up here because I don't want to fill that in. I'm going to put kind of a golden ball up at the top. So I'm going to start here and add my aura, attempting to be consistent with how far away I do my aura. Again, if it's not perfect, it doesn't matter. Keep moving this so that your hand is comfortable. With jelly roll pins, if you hold them gently on the paper, the ink should flow easily. Try not to press down too hard, which I have been doing a little bit of. Bring it around. And if you need to adjust your paper, I'm going to stop there, adjust, and then start my aura again. OK, so now we have an aura along the outside of the whole thing. And the next thing I'm going to do is start using my variety of jelly roll pins. And I have two different colors of purple. And I love purple, so I'm going to start with that one. And I'm not going to do it exactly the way that it showed it on the opus tile, but I will show you how I did it on that first tree. So on the inside of this, I'm going to start an aura and come up, go down until it starts to go in, and then come back around and then I'm going to stop. OK, and then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to come in, Aura. I'm going to come down and try to make it close to how I did the other one. And then come back around and stop there. OK, so there's purple. Now, how about blue? You can do yours however you want. If you're doing this on a white sheet of paper, any type of jelly roll pen will work. I have a huge collection of jelly roll pens 
<laughs> you can use any color that you like. Okay, so I'm going to turn this so it's easier for my hand. And then I'm going to do that same aura again in this section and in this section. Okay. And I didn't get that exactly matched up. So I'm going to fix it a little bit. Um, I think I'm going to use the second color of pinkish purple here. And then I'm just going to continue to add these auras. And I was pressing a little bit too much. If you'll just go easy on how you hold your jelly roll pen, you'll get a better flow. Okay. Here we go on the second one. And you can see these are not exactly the same size. It doesn't matter. It ends up being just such a beautiful tree to me. Um, trying to see what I did on this other one. I think I'll just start again. Okay, so I had blue, purple, blue, purple. I don't want to put green in there again. So I'll just do... I think I'll do blue again, kind of a separator between those. And remember, this is your art. You do it the way that pleases you. Now I'm going to come in with the purple again. On a smaller piece of paper, you might make your tree a little wider. I mean, you, know, you could have come down and made it a little bit wider. Just play with it. Okay. I'm kind of running out of room for an aura, but we're still going to put it in. Let's do blue again. And then I'm just going to leave those as they are. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is go back with those original colors. And I'm going to start adding circles. Now these circles are going to get filled on the inside with gold. So make your little orbs as big as you want, leaving room for you to be able to put those orbs. I'm also going to come over here and I'm going over that green a little bit and that's okay, that's what I intend to do. And I'm gonna add an orb on this side. Now be very aware that this is gonna take a while to dry. Don't put your hand on it. Now I'm going to come over here and start adding orbs. And I want them to be fairly good size to begin with. And wherever they're close, just fill those spaces in. Okay, and this is not going to have room. I'm just going to go ahead and fill that part in. Because you can't always come on top of these and add that gold jelly roll in there. Okay, so now on this side, start adding my orbs. And then as it gets close to this side, I'm just gonna fill that in. Okay. And if this is not a perfect orb, I'll have a chance to fix that when I come back with the gold jelly roll. Okay, so now I have the blue again. And these are 
metallic jelly roll. And I think I'm going to start with a fairly good size one here, a small one, another small one, and then fill in the spaces. And they don't have to be exact on both sides. Never had a Christmas tree that was exact all the way around, especially not a real one. Okay, so now to this pinkish purple. These don't have the names on them, I don't believe, but I got these in a set. Okay, just continue adding your orbs and being mindful. Oh, I didn't put those orbs in. Be mindful not to put your hand where you already had the jelly roll. Okay, so I'm gonna go back and add these. And I'm using that inside part as kind of a guide. I go back with the purple and add this one. And then with the blue. Again, being very careful not to put my hand where I already have fresh jelly roll down. Okay, so I'm ready to put blue again. And here, I'm just going to put a big orb and fill this one in. Put in my shiny one on this side. Another orb here. And fill that in. And again, yours is going to vary from mine, depending on how wide you did yours. And when we go back with the gold jelly roll, we can fix these however we need to. I think I'm just gonna fill these in, makes it easier. And then I'll add gold on top of that. My little orb on this side. Okay, now we're back to the pink. Okay, blue. Okay, so now, I know I haven't done anything here. I'm just gonna wait and see how that goes. I'm going to start adding gold. And I see that there's some space left open there. I can come back and fix that later. And if you didn't want to put the gold in here, you could put another color. I'm just very lightly touching this to my paper and I don't know if you can see that it is really flowing. 
Let's zoom in a little bit. And right there, I'm just going right on top of the purple. And then I'm going to add some gold along that spiral there. And then I'm going to add gold dots inside of this spiral. And I'm going to add gold here. Okay, now I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Add a little bit more gold if you need to. And then when you get to the tip, come around and add some more. And then I'm going to add a little gold ball out here. Okay, so I'm just going to continue to do that. Again, being very mindful that the gold that I just put down is going to take a while to dry. Just gently touching your pen to the paper. Being careful not to touch where it's wet. And we can come back and add more gold along here if we need to. I probably could wait till the end to add these orbs on the outside, but I'm being careful. Okay. Switch over here. And like I said, as it dries, I can see where I left a little bit of space there. And go back and touch that up as needed. And here, like I said, I didn't leave an opening, but I can still put the gold on top there. As these get smaller, you just have to take your time. And I've done several variations of this. And I think this was my favorite.
And since you're watching this on a recording, you can easily fast forward since this is a lot of <laughs> repetitive. Okay, along here, I'm just barely touching. And on this, I think I'm just going to put one little ball and then come around. Okay. Okay, so here, oops, I'm going to go ahead and come back in here and put purple. and pink. And then with the gold, I'm going to just, let's see, add the dots. Just barely touching. And then I'm going to fill this one, including on top of the green that was there. Okay. And you could, if you wanted to, put the dots. Eh, let's do it. Let's do a few dots around here. Okay, so there we go. Let's put the other balls here. I'm going to go back with the purple a little bit here and see if I can fill in some of those spaces a little bit better. Might make a difference. When it's wet, it still looks like it's open, but hopefully. It's not. Oh, that was the pink. Oops. And I can see with the blue a couple of spots here that I didn't cover. Okay, as it dries, you can go back and touch it up. And down here at the bottom, I'm going to make my tree trunk with the green. And you can fill it in or you can do little stripes coming down. I think I'm going to fill it in. <laughs> Q 
Jelly Roll pins do have a shelf life. Not sure how long these will last because I've had them for a couple of years, but thankfully they are still working. Kind of going little circles to fill this in better. And the little places I miss will show up when it dries and I can go back and fill those in. Okay, so one of the options that you have, let me show you on this one, is, and you can see I did this one a little bit different, is that you could go around the outside with another aura if you wanted to, or just leave it as it is. Now let me zoom out a little bit. And some of the things that you can do, um, I want to try to remove a little bit of the pencil marks because I can still see that. And I can see the pencil mark here at the top. And I want to get that off. Okay, a couple of things that you could do. You could leave it just like this. Or you could use a couple of other Zentangle patterns around the outside of this. Um, one that I like is AH. It's called AHH. -H. And again, that is a Zentangle headquarters pattern, which tends to look like a snowflake. So I'm going to start with, let's zoom in a little bit. So I'm going to start with a dot and then I'm going to bring out a line and put another little orb or dot on the end. Now I'm going to do a shorter one. And all you're going to do is just put various sizes. They don't have to match. If you're thinking of this being like a snowflake, snowflakes aren't exact. Well, maybe they are. <laughs> just keep coming out. You can make one a little bit longer. You don't have to have the exact number on each side. Okay, so there's ah, uh, and I think I'll put a blue one on this side. So again, just start with a circle, make it as big as you want, come out, put a dot, shorter one, another longer one, short, long, short, long, short, long, and short. Okay, so you could add as many of those as you want to. Uh, another thing that you can do is a pattern called Therefore. And this is not a published pattern by Zentangle, um, but it's super easy. It's just a dot, a dot, and a dot. and just throw those anywhere that you like. And uh, when secretaries used to take shorthand, this is the symbol for the word therefore. Whoop. And it's a Cool little fill, little 
filler. Looks like tiny sparkles of snow, maybe. Okay, so that is my Opus Christmas tree. And again, this is one of the first ones that I did. Zoom in a little bit. And the difference here is that for one, it's a little bit taller. Actually, that's a different size piece of paper <laughs> altogether. Um, it's a little bit shorter paper. Let's see, this one is four by a little bit more than five. Okay, that one's four by five. This one is four by six. And then I have this one that's on cardstock, and that is a Zentangle size piece of paper. And I used um, a mixture of metallic jelly roll with the moonlight jelly rolls. And I did just the fescue that came around like the original Opus. And then I put uh, just another little, I don't know what you want to call it, a muka or a fat Opus uh, fescue there. And I put the little balls like I did on this one and then put an outline in a different color. Here's another one that is done with uh, a micron pen. And then I used the metallic jelly rolls. The colors don't show up very well here, but that's that one. And I think I've lost, oh, there we go. And then this one is more like the way Opus is done as far as bringing it in and making a, a fat little um, wow, I've gone brain dead on that aura, a little fat aura inside. And then I was able to put more of the little colors inside. And then here is the awe ah at the top for a little Christmas tree. So there you go. You can do it in different sizes. You can use different pins. You could do this and then use watercolor or regular pencils on it. And any way you do it, it's going to turn out great. It's fun. And if you're able to get a better cardstock than this, it turns out to be a nice card. And then this, when you flip it, you can write on the back and it works as a stand to hold it up, except that this cardstock is not heavy enough to hold this up really well. So uh, I hope you enjoyed that. The next thing I'm going to show you is how I did this. And that's going to be a separate section of this video because I need to clean up my desk. So I'm going to pause and then come right back to this. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how I did this, but I'm going to show you on um, a regular size Zendala, or not Zendala, uh, three and a half inch tile. So this is the Zentangle three and a half inch. Go ahead. Uh, first of all, I want to show you this is the instructions from, and I'm not sure how to say her name, Tumami Galliano. She is a certified Zentangle teacher, and her website is www 
www.pebblesanddrops.com. She shared this idea on the Certified Zentangle Teacher Facebook page. And she, I will give you a link to her website where she has the full instructions for this. I'm just gonna kind of give you um, my tips for how I did this. And then with that link, you can go and get this printout. And she has a video where she shows exactly how she does it. And um, she shared it for free and I am sharing it for free. And would encourage anyone who likes this and wants to share it to send them to her site. She also has other classes that she offers. Um, anyway, I wanna show you how to do one for a regular sized Zentangled tile. So here's one that I showed you earlier and it would fit on this and then would flip, okay? And the way that you're gonna do this, on her page, she does four inches by five and a half inches. Actually, this is an eight inch by, so eight inches wide, folded, it is four inches. But what I found, okay, here's one. What I found with this, was that if I wanted to put it into a five by seven inch envelope, it wouldn't fit. So I cut mine to five inches going this way. And then in this direction, it is still eight inches. Okay, so the first thing that she does is she folds it in half and then she uses uh, Zentangle tile and sets it on the paper. Let me show you. Okay, I'm get, kind of getting ahead of myself. The first thing that you're going to do on your Zentangle tile is you're going to mark it. And I used a ruler and a tile is three and a half inches. So at one and three quarters inch, you're gonna put a mark and then do the same thing down here at the bottom at one and three quarters inches. And then seven eighths of an inch back from that, okay, which is halfway across again, you're gonna put another mark. And down here at seven eighths, which is halfway, you do the same thing. And then on this piece of paper that you had folded in half, okay? Now I need to zoom back out a little, sorry. On that paper that you had folded in half, then you're gonna use, uh, I had an X-Acto knife, but she put the tile down and on this mark, you line it up with that mountain fold. Okay, so your card was folded this way. Open it up and pretend it's not cut yet. <laughs> and put your Zendala, your tile down. And you're going to cut around the edge. And you wanna make sure, and she says so in the video, that you cut a little bit larger than the actual tile. So you mark from here. And when I did my marks, I had my mark come out more like this. So I put a line there. I put a line this way. Same here, put a line. And watch her video, please. Um, I'm just giving you a couple of tips. And I also kind of marked here and here. I marked here. And then on the lines over here, I went a little bit past. And I'll show you why in just a second. 
Okay, so I ended up with these kind of marks on my page. Here and here, a mark at the top, and this one I knew was on the fold. And the reason I did that was because when I laid my ruler down to do the cut, I wasn't sure where to stop cutting, but with these lines here that I knew I needed to start here and do my cut and then turn, I could see my start and stop points, okay? And again, you want to make it a little bit bigger than your tile so that when you get it on there, it's gonna flip, okay? So cut here and here, and then she goes back and cuts a little bit more off this side and this side. So now you can see that it's a little bit open here and here, and that's so that it will flip a little bit easier. Then you would go back, of course, and remove your pencil lines. And by the way, this is 80 pound cardstock. I just happen to have some heavier cardstock. And I think it's going to work a little bit better. Okay, so I'm going to put this one on there. So, oh, I did <laughs> happy faces on the back. Obviously, I started over on this one. And this is also cardstock that I was practicing on. When I started teaching Zentangle, um, my Zentangle teacher found this nice bright white, well, it's not a bright white, but uh, white heavy cardstock that we ordered so that we had a nice amount of uh, paper that we could use to create our own cards. And you know what, I think this one's actually a little bit too big. Excuse me. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna do this one instead. Cause if you look, I should be able to see that opening on both sides and I couldn't with that other piece because it had been cut a little bit too big. So here we go again with the glue on the back. Make sure you get it on the edges. And I got a little bit on the front, but it dries clear. So now I'm going to set it on there and make sure it's centered. Hopefully. Okay, so now when I fold it, and then this is folded back. Let's see if my eraser will take that off. Okay, so then it flips. I would suggest trying it a couple of times on just some scrap paper until you figure it out. But with this being five inches this way, and eight inches this way. When you do this, it will fit in a five by seven envelope if you want to use this as a card. And your Zentangle tiles will fit on this. And again, here's the mark center, seven inches, seven eighths of an inch back from that is your second mark at the top and the bottom. And then it will fit. Make sure you cut it big enough. And there you go. You can send me an email 
if you have any questions, notperfectzen at gmail.com. I hope you've enjoyed this. And I will put the link down in the bottom to the pebblesanddrops.com site where the instructions for this are located. I think you need to join, but there's it's just adding your email and then she lets you in and you can see the other um, classes that she has. And I really appreciate that she offered this freely. Uh, good luck with this. I hope you liked it. And if possible, please subscribe and like the video. I appreciate that. And I hope you have a happy Thanksgiving if you celebrate it. And I will see you next time. Bye.